We are live. Hey, it is serverless office hours. Look, look who's here. I got Max and Mehmet and Max. It's Maximilian Shellhorn. Is that the full name, way of saying that? Yes. Yeah, okay. exactly are right. You, are you just being nice to me or did I really get it? You really get it. Okay. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> got it. So what I tend to do is I, I tend to seriously slaughter names. Uh, and so a lot of times people are like, like yeah, you're, you're close enough. They're just nice. But anyway, and then Mimit Nuri Da Vinci. Da Vinci. Yeah, I said Da Vinci. Yeah. <laughs> Darn it. I worked so hard. Anyway, I'm super glad y'all are here. Uh, I want to take a moment real quick and, and let people know who you are, what you do. So uh, Max, if you would if you would start us up, tell us what you do here and and who you are. Yeah, um, thanks. So I'm Maximilian Schellhorn. I'm a solutions architect uh, with AWS and I'm working in the DAC area. So basically together with ISV customers, so SaaS businesses, and um, yeah, I'm helping them through their journey. On top of that, I'm also specialized on uh, serverless uh, technology and especially Java because I've been a Java developer myself for more than 10 years before joining AWS. And yeah, I'm trying to get the best out of the serverless world and hopefully I can share some exciting stuff around that today. Nice. And where are you based, Max? Uh, I'm based in Innsbruck, Austria. So I just oh, moved nice. from Berlin last year okay. and now yeah. I'm in the middle of the Alps, basically. Ah, it's gorgeous up there. I've been to Innsbruck, <laughs> believe it or not. Wait. Yes, oh. I've been to Innsbruck. I had to think for a minute. Yes, so uh, yes, awesome. I have. So, all right, Mehmet, tell us who you are, what you do. Uh, hey, everyone, my name is Mehmet Nur Deveji, and I'm an engineer from uh, Sam CLI team. So, uh, mainly working on the Sam CLI product. Um, last year or so, uh, main project is the Sam Accelerate uh, we've been working on. Um, so, I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, before you ask, Eric. Uh, yeah, I was. I was. <laughs> <laughs> are you from there or live there? Joining from okay, all right, okay, yeah. okay, all right, oh, very cool. So, uh, and I'm I'm in Colorado, I'm in northern Colorado where last week it was snowing and this week it's you know 80 degrees and sunny, so it, you never know in Colorado, it's you know, it's, it's summer, winter, spring, all in within a day or two. So, uh, super thrilled y'all are here. Uh, we've got some folks out there, uh, throw in a hello, a howdy if you can, tell us where you're watching from. Uh, and uh, we are going to get started. Now, today, we're going to be talking about, uh, Max, as, as you said, Java, or where you talked about Java. Now, I'm going to tell you my background in Java. Before I became a developer, I was I, when I was thinking about becoming a developer, I was actually doing something entirely different. I mean, polar opposite. And I was thinking about becoming a developer. One of my really good buddies was a developer, and he said, and I said, if and this... Uh, now I'm really going to date myself. This is roughly late nineties. Okay. Uh, and he, he, he said, I said, where should I start? He said, you should learn Java, That just learn Java. So I went into this class, no other program experience. I had two weeks in, I had to drop the class. It was so overwhelming. Well, I just smacked my mind. So <laughs> overwhelming, but Java has been around a long time and, and it's an incredibly powerful language. It's incredibly fast. Uh, and now, obviously, with Snapstart, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming you're going to talk about Snapstart today a little bit. Are we going to cover that at all? Okay, mm -hmm. maybe. maybe we'll mention. Yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally like putting. I uh, wasn't planned at all, Eric. But anyway, uh, so but with things like that, now it's very viable language for ephemeral services like Lambda functions and things like that. So super excited to see where you take us today. Uh, I know you've you've got some stuff. So are you ready to get started? Sure. Yeah. All right. Look, we've got some folks from Australia, just so, just so you know. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, they have so, hope they free the Australian people. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get started, and I'm going to share your screen if you're ready. Yeah. All right. Let me all right. share my screen. Okay. Uh, Here it is. All it's right. all you. Perfect. Good. So, yeah, um, because since we said and uh, we will basically start also in, like in the – we started from the Java ecosystem, just in case someone – doesn't really know like what um, Sam uh, is about. We just have like a two minute intro of Sam just so to get everyone on the same page. So um, essentially uh, what Sam is, is like a, yeah, you can think of it as a cloud formation extension optimized for serverless, right? So whenever we are writing serverless applications, we need like a convenient way to define our resources. So be it like a, a Lambda function, for example, or a DynamoDB table, API gateway, things like that. So um, with a SAM, actually, that's quite easy to do. It simplifies um, a lot of things. So if you think of like the very 
um, serverless 101 kind of architecture like API Gateway, Lambda, DynamoDB, right? If you would write that in traditional like infrastructure as code or let's say with playing cloud formation, right? So that would require quite some things to write, right? So you need to set up different permissions between the different components, uh, like IAM roles, things like that, right? And a lot of kind of configuration. And SAM now allows you to simplify that a lot, right? So the very same CloudFormation template that you just saw, you can write with SAM in just a few lines. And under the hood, it will basically uh, do a lot of things for you as setting up like the execution um, policy like and uh, the API endpoint and the permissions and all of that, just with those kind of few lines um, of uh, YAML, essentially. So, <clears throat> What uh, most importantly, or what Sam comes in is like two flavors, right? So we first have the templates. So the thing that we just showed, so you write like infrastructure as code and like YAML, you define all your stuff, but you also have like some kind of tooling, right? The Sam CLI that you can install on your machine and you can do things like local development. You can do build um, processes, which is uh, the majority of our work that we did that we want to share today. So how can you tweak the build, especially for Java? And then you can use that yeah, to locally invoke your Lambda function. So um, a lot of things. So we just have here a few excerpts on what you can do with it. So like Sam in it to create like a bootstrap kind of project um, uh, built yeah, to build um, the whole application and deploy. And with local, you have like a lot of um, kind of uh, possibilities to invoke Lambda functions locally to generate like different kind of payload events that you might need for testing, like an example S3 event and so on. So this is just right to set a bit um, the stage um, what uh, Sam uh, is about. And, I, I feel yeah. like I should have worn my, worn my squirrel costume as much as we're talking <laughs> yes. about. That I didn't even think about it. I know you're disappointed, Mehmet. I know you are. So, uh, <laughs> hey, good job. I love the same presentation. It's good. <laughs> Awesome. Great. So what we did is essentially we wrote um, a blog post. Maybe we can share that also with um, yeah. the audience around how you can most effectively build the application. So building really like um, locally building and packaging like the whole application because in Java, right, there's a big like kind of tool sets. There are a lot of plugins. So people build like Java apps very differently. So and we kind of gathered a few best practices on what you can leverage uh, with them and we would walk you essentially through um, a, a couple of those uh, examples uh, today. All right. I have posted the blog post and all the channels. So if you're looking for the, this blog post, it is it should be there in the chat. All right. Awesome. Um, yeah. With that, Mehmet, anything to, to add from your end? Um, no. I think we can start with the uh, building Java applications part. Yeah. So we, I would tell you, actually, I am going to interrupt. We did have a question come in, and I think it's one we probably should handle before we jump into this. Sure. Uh, and so uh, you, we have, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up actually here. So it says, uh, that's just me responding to it. Here we go. How, how's everybody doing? Here we go. All right. So the question is, is Java still relevant in 2023? I heard it is dead. <laughs> okay. So Max, uh, I'm a, I'll let you go. I have a few things to say, but you'll probably say them also, but uh, your opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting one. So I've been to a lot of Java conferences also last year. So we're also, I'm also an author of the Java on AWS Lambda workshop. I can also drop the link um, later. And I've been doing yeah. that with a lot of um, uh, customers and also like uh, on third party conferences. So there's really a high demand for Java. Obviously, it has been designed like more than 25 years ago with a lot of different kind of uh, key pillars that it was focusing on, focusing on, right? So it was focusing on like portability, like between different kind of um, uh, systems, and it was designed for very long running kind of app server environments, things like that, right? So obviously, um, there are new challenges, right, that Java had in this new kind of ephemeral, quickly scaling environments. But over the recent years, you could also see how it was really accelerating, right? So the release cycle now is much lower, right? So you get like a lot of new releases. So you see a lot of like big innovation in the field coming. We have new things like um, uh, Graal VM, for example, to create like a native binary, which drastically reduces also your um, startup time, right? And your memory footprint. We have things like checkpointing, for example, checkpoint and restore. 
like the crack project for example or a snap start right that takes like a, a fully uh, like a snapshot of an already initialized environment and you can start from it later so there's a lot of innovation going on and company have uh, companies heavily invested into java over the last mm. year and just because they want to modernize they don't want to switch also their complete stack now right to to a completely different language and yeah we, we see java performing really well also uh, yeah in serverless and containers so i would say it's uh yeah um very relevant today yeah yeah i, I couldn't agree more uh you know from uh, just from folks i talk to just anecdotally uh in in the enterprise space java's huge net is huge these compiled languages that run very fast run very low uh are, are still hugely popular uh in amazon itself amazon.com there's a lot of java used internally uh, not by me because I can't even spell Java, but uh, by by folks like Mehmet and Max and and Mark and uh, so so external and internal to AWS and Amazon, Java's huge. But but companies worldwide are still it's it's a it's a very uh, popular product still. All right, we got another couple other questions coming in, but I'll bring them up a little bit later. We've got a question on on Sam and serverless and things like that, so I have an answer to that. And but I want to jump into what you've got, so let's let's show some stuff. All right. Good. So yeah, we we basically prepared like four to five um, examples on how you can build <laughs> Java applications differently. So it's like um, we also have the sample uh, repository. So um, you should um, find that also in the comments at some point. Yep. So um, what we have is um, a default way. We build an Uber jar. We build like a Graal VM kind of custom runtime. And also we show a few other capabilities. Um, so the very first thing that you need to know is, so we're focusing today on SAM build, right? Which is like a comment that you can put on the CLI, you hit like SAM build and your project essentially gets built and you get like an artifact more or less out of it. Now, there is a very important thing to note here on, on uh, SAM and I'd let Mehmet then uh, dive deeper on this kind of topic, which is um, like the default way on how SAM builds your uh, application. So imagine you're building your first Lambda function, right? SAM in it, you have like um, a, a kind of template. And um, in that case here, we have just a very simple app. It's super simple. So it's just essentially a hello world um, that takes like a name. So if um, um, the person has a name, we say hello plus the name. And otherwise, if you haven't provided any name, it will say hello world. So that's it mostly. So let's imagine you wrote that. Now you need to somehow build and package it to be able to deploy it to Lambda. And the default way how um, Sam essentially does that is it takes a template YAML file, which I will show in a second, um, as an input to the um, Sam build command. And then there's an, an internal opinionated way on how Sam will build your application. So it's not like anything you need to configure or something in advance, no fancy plugins or whatever that you need to use. Um, if you hit Sam build, there's a predefined way um, on how uh, uh, this is done. So I just walk you through here the basics. So you have like this kind of template file, which references the code URI, so which is just the directory where your sources are in. Um, and you can tell them a lot, a couple of other things like, okay, we need this kind of memory. We want to be it on a Java 11 runtime. And we want to name it like this, for example. And here um, we have just an environment variable. This is just to enable tiered compilation, which gives you some kind of performance. There's also a blog that Mark um, uh, wrote on it. So, and that's basically it. So you define that. And when you hit some build, a build process will be automatically triggered. And this is based on the, on the AWS Lambda uh, builders. Uh, which is actually an own repository, which continue, which um, has like a couple of opinionated ways on how to build the application. But I let Mehmet maybe explain that a bit deeper because he's actually building this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so the default one, um, actually the one that you show, Max, is using the the Mehmet example. And as you mentioned, in the template uh, configuration, uh, we need to provide uh, the code URI which is the folder that your uh, function resides, where, where your POM XML file should be in. And you, you need to provide your handler, which is the package name, class name, and the method name in it. 
and of course the runtime should be java 11. so when all of this provided when when you run sam build uh, behind the scenes uh, lambda builders will run the following maven commands it will first run maven clean install to uh, to build your function and also download dependencies and then we will run maven dependency copy with the runtime scope so we will copy all the dependencies that you have in your function which is required during the runtime. So you might have something for compilation, you might have something for just runtime. We will copy all the jar files to the target location. And once everything is built and done, if you look at the .awsm slash build slash your function resource, uh, sorry, functions logical ID, then you can see all the classes and jar files are bundled there. So the next step when you run some package and deploy, we will zip everything and then upload to S3 so that it will be ready for, you know, for the deployment. So I'm going to jump in here real quick based on what you're saying. And we had this comment in, in the chat says, I think Java is just a higher, higher learning curve. Yeah. That, that, there's probably some truth to that. Uh, Gradle is harder to pick up. Uh, unlike NPM, no JS, uh, they just got to make Java build tools easier. I, I like the statement because it, it really gives me the prompt to say, that's what we're, we agree. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, I mean, any coding is hard. I mean, if, if, if it weren't, everybody would be doing it. I mean, that's, that's what we say, but it, when, when we want to do things right, what we've done here is, is we've actually, we've taken experts like Maximilian and, and Mark and, and Mehmet and folks and said, what's your opinion on the best way of building these out? And that's what you end up with here. But the cool thing about it, and I want to, I want to make this clear is this doesn't just happen with Java with all the run times that we support we take those and do those opinionated builds in SAM. So if you're using SAM, you get that for Python, you get that for .NET, you get that for Ruby, you get it for Node, for TypeScript, for, you know, I can go on and on and on. Uh, but the idea, uh, yes, it's, yeah, we're looking at the builders here. The idea is we've kind of figured that all out. So as long as you know the code, we can't really teach you the code, right? But if you know the code itself and can write that out and you use SAM to implement that, a lot of that heavy lifting is taken out of the way, especially in light of, of Lambda functions. Uh, and that kind of comes back to, uh, and I want to clear something up because we had another question that says, uh, how, how or does AWS Amplify do Java deploy the app as SAM? Uh, and... Um, and, and, and Mehmet, I, well, I, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll jump on this. SAM is just the tool to deploy the Java. There's no such thing as a SAM code or SAM application. We say SAM application because SAM is the framework for any of these runtime languages. SAM literally is just a, it's, it's a describe. There's two parts to SAM as Max showed. It's that, that the template that describes where stuff is and how it should be built out and what should be included. And then the second tool, which is more what we're talking about here, that handles all this bundling and stuff like that. And that's the CLI tool. So there's not an actual uh, SAM that's deployed. It is a literal Java application that's being deployed. We're just using the SAM implementation or tools to do that. Hopefully that clears up. Either one of you, you want to, <laughs> how you doing? They pay me to speak for AWS. Do either one of you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I think you explained it pretty well. So um, uh, maybe here this uh, kind of gives, um, like completes also the picture. So after you have hit this SAM build, right? And we have this kind of Lambda builders, which is like open source, right? You, you see basically for every language, how this is built internally. So um, here I have this example of the Maven, build right it really explains you how is uh, what sam is doing under the hood right to um, kind of build the application so it's everything is transparent and you can take a look and what happens afterwards is just the final artifact the java app will be then in this dot aws sam folder so here you have a build folder and you see here kind of this hello world function folder which has like the dependency jars in the lib folder and your class files here. And as soon as you hit SAM deploy, it will just zip that as mm -hmm. Mehmet explained, and it will put it into Lambda. So of course you can also do all of that manually, right? And on your own. And there are a couple of frameworks, of course, that also do that for you. But yeah, it's uh, one way of doing things. It's not like, um, yeah, it, that you have to do everything with, with SAM, for example, right? It just makes it very convenient. Yeah. Yep. All right, so once you have that, as you see here, you basically have the structure. So if you would hit SAM deploy, um, this will basically uh, get deployed um, to 
your AWS um, account. So um, usually you can define like a stack name. I already did that. And then um, this, as I said, um, I already deployed that before. So it's already there. So this will essentially get zipped. And then you can just call um, the Lambda function. So for example, I have here a simple invoke command that will now call our function. And as you see, as a result, you get like the hello world and kind of the status code of the function. The convenient thing with Sam, and this is where Sam also makes things very easy is, or very convenient is, I can now also do a Sam local invoke, which takes my pre-built um, artifacts and runs it locally. So without deploying the actual lab, I can in invoke it locally. And I say, uh, see here, like the same uh, hello world that I've seen. Uh, before and there's like a lot of different tooling maybe Mehmet you can also give like your thoughts on Sam Accelerate on how, how that uh, makes it even smoother right when you're doing those kind of things yeah so in in your example like deploy is usually I mean uh, not usually deploy is used for production systems so if you're deploying to your uh, to your production environment then you should use deploy but you can also use Sam Sync which is like uh, a development command that you can, you know, develop against a, de um, a stack in the cloud. But of course, that should be a development stack. And whenever you make a change, Sam will build and synchronize your code with the deployed stack uh, automatically. And since it's using the APIs rather than the cloud formation, it is really fast comparing to deploy method. Like you should get a synchronized completed in around five seconds. Where in cloud formation example, I think it will be a couple of more seconds. Uh, so. If you're testing against cloud, Samsung is like a, a good choice to move forward there. Yeah, I, I would add on to that because as as Java developers, you know, I have done some. You know, any any compiled language development, when we change code, what's the first thing we need to do? We need to compile, right? So it's it kind of, so Samsung kind of takes that same process and and compiles, but in that same process, then drops it up on the cloud. And and our while I love local invoke, that's my sanity check. Is, is, is what I wrote even working, right? Does that work within the code? But what I wanna see is more based on permissions in the cloud, what's driving it. We, we, we really encourage you get to the cloud as soon as you can and Sam Sync uh, really opens up for that. Uh, we did have another question come in about local invoke uh, and, and I've actually got a couple questions here. But I, will, I do want to explain, uh, Alper Codes asks, does local invoke require Docker? It requires a container. I won't say it requires Docker because we work with different uh, Docker uh, or, or container uh, software. Uh, what, what are some of the other ones we support, Mimit? It's not coming to me right now. Anything uh -huh. that basically does containers, right? Yeah. Local and machine, yeah. So it doesn't have to be Docker. I know that, that uh, with the licensing, you may not have a license of Docker, but you can use, uh, uh, oh darn, nothing's coming to mind. I've just gone completely blank. Um, so, but yeah, it does require a container to do that. So here's a question, Mimit, this might be for you. Uh, if your application has multiple Lambda functions in their own jars, do you see I, I added Lambda functions there? Because Chris Munns would still, I think, today tackle me if I say Lambdas. So uh, he'd say, he, I used to get in trouble for that on in presence. It's not Lambdas, it's Lambda function. You can call it Lambdas. I know what you mean. It's fine. So anyway, if your application has multiple Lambdas with their own jars, it could become very huge. Any plans would automatically create uh, a dependencies layer? So that's a good question. Uh, we actually have something similar in Samsung. Uh, so in the default mode of Samsung, uh, we will move all the dependencies into its own uh, layer. So whenever you make a code change, we are trying to make the functions at very minimum so that the, the, the code changes will be synchronized really quickly. Uh, but that is not available, uh, you know, the, the regular build yet. Uh, but, you know, uh, that is something that um, will be useful. We will take as a, you know, feature request and Try to work on it. That's great. All right, we got a bunch of questions coming in, so we're going to go a little bit more, and then I'll interrupt you in a little mm -hmm. bit. Keep the questions coming. I'm not ignoring you, but uh, we've got some great stuff coming in. So, <laughs> all right, great. So yeah, what? So we basically covered now the um, yeah default way, the opinionated way. But we understand right that the, yeah, as we said, the Java ecosystem is quite big, so people have like their own kind of build systems their own kind of plugins that they want to use. So um, what we see a lot is people then leveraging um, uh, a makefile um, to customize their build process. So Sam allows you to create like a makefile with like dedicated instructions to build your application in your own 
kind of way. So this is kind of the visualize before we jump into code, right? So you have your template YAML, you do some build, you give like a make file with instructions on how you want to build. The output will still be in that same SAM uh, uh, build kind of folder, which gets zipped and then deployed. So from there on, it's the same thing, but um, you, we can customize that. So what we prepared is like an example with an Uber jar or Fed jar, as we uh, call that like in the Java space, which is essentially like a jar file that contains all of its um, dependencies as well. So that's like very um, common way. So most of the time also frameworks are kind of as a result as of the build process, they're giving you like an Uber or a Fed jar, for example. And we prepared here an example on how to um, do that. So what you would need to do, you have still have your template file as you had in your first um, in the default one, but now you're saying um, um, build method make file. So you can customize it. So you say here build method make file and what you would need to have now in this code URI path, which is this one here, you need to provide a make file and with your own instructions. So here in that case, what we provide is we want to do a Maven clean package. And then we want to uh, copy the final artifact into Sam's artifacts directory, which is kind of provided here as like a uh, variable, right? So what it does under the hood, um, if you have like, um, if you want to build an Uber jar, first of all, most of the time you can use, for example, the Maven Shade plugin to do that. So you just have here a plugin. And if I go into this example, uh, Uber jar and I go into the correct folder and I, if I do Maven clean package now completely without Sam, um, as a result, so it will build my application, run maybe the tests on it. And as you can see here in the target folder, I will again get this kind of Uber jar produced here. Now, if I want to do the exactly thing that I just did manually, right, you just provide the make file and saying, hey, just execute this kind of comment. This can be whatever you like, right, and whatever your kind of plugins that you need. And then afterwards, please copy that artifact, which you see here, right, from this target to the artifact steer of Sam. So if you do now a Sam build with on that folder, which has the make file, it will run this process. Uh, the same that we just saw when I did it manually. And as the in the SAM folder, I will now have here this um, jar file uh, packaged, uh, but everything abstracted more or less by SAM, and I just provide this kind of make file. So I have huge possibilities to customize my build however I like with this kind of make file um, approach. Very cool. And now, now tell me about the name of that action you said build dash hello world function uber jar that uh why do we do that yeah we need to uh Mehmet, do you want to go on this yeah mm -hmm. sure so uh, in the make file your target should start with build dash and then should be completed with your logical id of the function so that sam could find the instructions there yep very cool yeah, so if you have like multiple different functions that you want to pull differently, right, then in the make file, you can have the different kind of section. Yeah. The add is just to avoid like echoing um, the actual command. So nothing fancy. And yeah, this is um, yeah a very common way um, to do things. And we have that here as a reference. And if there are not like any... Uh, questions or anywhere where you want to jump in, I can go on the next. Oh, uh, no, we got questions. Yeah. All right. So here we go. So we're going to back up a little bit here. Uh, there's a couple about like uh, studying for the for the Dev Associates exam. I will take care of that in a little bit, as well as the SAM versus serverless. Um, uh, we have a lot of one here. I haven't actually read the whole thing, but I'm, I'm, we're going to throw it out here. Okay. It says, hello. Thanks for an interesting topic. My question is, given the level of granularity when using FOS, small code snippets, and the resources consumed by Java and AWS uh, Lambda and the slow start, uh, even with uh, AOT, Quarkus and Grail VM, for example, do you think writing Lambda in Java is still profitable? Okay. I mean, if you have a monolith of microservice in Java, but it's not a FOS architecture, then you still have to face refactoring and rethinking your project's environment. Uh, it seems to change. Them. And, and I think we actually ran out of space. But it, it, what do you think? Is so, so we're back to this. Is it worth it to bring a monolith? There's a couple of questions in, involved here. Does, uh, you know, is Java a good fit for Lambda functions? 
right? And that actually we'll talk about. There's another question a little bit later down. And is it so much so worth doing a monolithic uh, conversion to a microservices or FOS implementation? Uh, mm -hmm. I have some thoughts on the matter, but I'm going to throw it to you two first. Uh, yeah, so I think we covered also, like, is it, does it still make sense or does it make sense to write um, these things in Java? And yes, it definitely does, for also for the reason that we mentioned um, uh, in, in the beginning. And when you talk about um, this kind of monolithic uh, kind of architecture, so it is possible, and I know from like a couple of customers also who are um, doing that, they bring their um, applications um, to Lambda. So they run their traditional kind of Java EE or kind of Spring Boot applications on Lambda. There are a couple of um, things that you need to keep in mind because your traditional Spring application, for example, deals with a plain HTTP request, for example, right? And on, on Lambda, you're dealing actually with an API gateway event, which is like a JSON payload, essentially. So there needs to be some kind of trans translation layer in between that takes the uh, kind of API request and converts it to something that your framework, for example, understands. There are a couple of interesting projects that do that. We have the serverless Java container, for example, which is also on our AWS uh, open source repositories where we provide this functionality. There's also a Lambda web adapter um, that does this kind of translation. Um, so yeah, we, we see that um, actually a lot because the cool thing is right, scaling to zero, obviously, right? So you have that big kind of application and maybe it's used only in the business hours, for example, right? And after that, no one is using it, right? And you can naturally scale now with Lambda to zero and based on your demand, you can um, scale it up again. So yes, we definitely see also traditional kind of monolithic applications being ported to Lambda and then on the fly also uh, refactored along, for example. All right. So the thing I would, Mehmet, do you have anything you want to add on that first? Um, yeah, just quickly touch on the, you know, the technical parts, uh, like for running a Lambda function, you know, it should start fast and it should relatively uh, use less memory. But for Java, they usually start slow and they might use more memory there. For starting slow, we have the snap start feature. So as we talked, uh, please go ahead and test it. It should resolve your slow start problems. And uh, for memory problems, I'm not sure if GraalVM could be helpful there, Max. Uh, yes. I know you have been testing there. So mm -hmm. GraalVM can help you there as well. Of course, GraalVM is also native executable. So that also eliminates some of the cold start issues there. So. Yeah. So, uh, and I would take it, I'm going to step back a little bit because the question regarding should we take monolith to a, to a microservice or, or FOS or, or, you know, there's all kinds of different things. Um, it's not just a Java question, right? It's, it's, it's an architectural question uh, that folks are trying to decide. And there's, and, and, and maybe we could do another 10 shows on this topic. Right. But I'm right. just going to give my, my, my two, two, two cents worth uh, is, you know, there, <laughs> You know, like every other technical question, it depends, right? You know, there, there's so many different ways of doing things. But one of the things I would look at when you're trying to decide whether it's, do do I change this over to a microservice, even if it's Java, and, and and they talked about the technical aspects of Java, but from a from a, a philosophy of do I do monolith, do I do microservices? One of the things, and, and Max touched on this a little bit, one of the things with microservices is, is you get into, at least with services, we get into what's called event-driven architecture. And that's really I, kind of where I think you're thinking about when you say, do, do I stay monolith, API-driven, functional-driven, that kind of thing, or do I move to more of an event-driven architecture, which serverless inherently is. I mean, it's the way the way our serverless system sits up or, or the way, you know, a lot of what we're doing on this is inherently uh, event-driven architecture. And there's a lot of advantages to that. Uh, in running, this is kind of an interesting thing, in running distributed event-driven architecture, you get a lot of advantages on with reliability, with, uh, you know, maintenance, things like that. Uh, the building it, because it's distributed and distributed systems are hard, can be a little harder. And that's why tools like SAM exist, you know, to help you build those out. Uh, I, I could go on and I have a lot on this, but I'm going to, I'm going to post a link here. We actually did a whole day on this last year in London. And a lot of the sessions were recorded. If you're looking at, should I go, should, should I be looking at uh, monolithic versus, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
versus uh, a, a, an event-driven architecture. Apparently, I can't click and type and talk at the same time. Uh, I would inc I would encourage you to take a look at this video uh, or the videos on here. If you go into the schedule, anywhere there's there's uh, a talk that doesn't have a blocked out camera, there's a recording tied to it. Uh, and especially the keynote where uh, Werner, or not Werner, uh, uh, Gregor Hope talks about EDA and why we do that. So it, that's a big conversation. I love the question. Uh, and, and it is a big, big cover, uh, you know, conversation. So I would check these out. A uh, couple other questions we have coming in real quick. Um, and we've already, you've already, we've already answered that. Uh, I feel, I still feel Java. This is more just a statement. Uh, the undead squirrel, which I'm going to take that as the same squirrel. I love that. Uh, I feel Java still has a, has a great purpose. Our enterprise has lots of legacy Java code using libraries of third party code that is only available in Java. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Java, and it's not just legacy code. There's a lot of new code being built in Java as well because it works. It's what people know. It, you know, it's fast. It's, you know, it's like Mehmet said, slow to start. But once it's running, it's fast, you know? And, and, and so a uh, lot to say about that. Um, with that, um, I'm going to go through. I think we're okay on questions. Uh, I have a couple others that, that I will address a little bit later. Let's go on to the mm -hmm. next, next demo. All right. Great. So yeah, what we've seen uh, so far is uh, yeah, uh, either relying on uh, Sam's uh, default kind of way on building things or how you can completely like customize it with this make file. And now there is another capability which is not like specific to one of those two variants that we showed, but what is pretty cool is that you can execute your build inside a container, for example. So the same that if we take the first example, so the um, Maven default, so if we run Sam build again, we can add this flag saying Sam build minus minus use container. Now the cool thing is that um, the build now is not executed on my local machine. Uh, obviously it does, but it's like inside um, a Docker uh, container that comes with dependencies pre-installed. Because if I run some build without use container, I need to have Java installed, right, locally, and I need to have Maven, for example, installed to be able to build like this kind of thing. But if I do use container, Sam offers me a way to um, run this kind of build uh, steps that we saw from the Lambda builders inside a container that comes with those um, dependencies pre-installed. So there is like a big um, list of predefined images that we have. So we will uh, also post a link to that. So you have like a base image, a, a SAM builder base image for all the different kind of runtimes. And you basically can pick and choose the ones. And then this whole build process gets executed in the container. So that's pretty convenient. If I just now, Eric, if I share the code with you and you don't have Java or anything installed, you could Try still it. run some build minus minus use container and it would build on your machine uh, via this container or also for CI CD pipelines, it might make sense where you do not have to create everything in advance. So um, yeah, this is a very nice um, um, or a cool way of kind of abstracting the way on um, uh, doing things. Yeah, I use this all the time. Uh, it, it, when when new SAM features come out and different things like that, I'm always testing them. <laughs> Mimic can tell you because I'm a Mimic, and normally it's because I didn't read the instructions right. But I'm like Mimic, why isn't this working for me? And he's like, read the instructions, Eric, and and we get it right. So, uh, but but one of the things is I don't have my machine set up to do. .NET. I don't have it set up to do Java. I barely have it set to do Python, you know. And so I use this all the time to test something out really quick, and which is kind of interesting because we've had some conversation going on up above uh, where I think uh, uh, said, uh, well, I I'll have to find it a little bit. But the, the gist of the comment was, I want to learn to develop in this. I need to get a Mac. And that's not true. The reality is you just, with this kind of, first of all, Windows machine. Now, I, I use a Mac. I prefer a Mac, but I also have a Windows machine sitting right there. Uh, I have both sitting here. Both work. Sam works on both of these. Your your development language works on both of these. Uh, and so don't think you have to have a Mac. Uh, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of development tools for these. But with Sam, if you could just get, 
containers working, Docker installed or some of the other uh, supported the open source ones, then this use container is super helpful. The first and, and caution, the first time may seem really slow because it might be a big, big image. And so the very first time we grab it, we download it. And anytime we'll check for updates on it and you can do that. But after that, then it's local, it's running, and then you can just, uh, you can you know, make use of that. And what's really cool is in, in Sam, we've got some, some uh, things where you can say, like, especially when you're doing some local testing, you can tell the, the container not to shut down, always stay up and active. Uh, and so like, what was that? Warm containers, right? Mimin, yeah. I think that's the command. Yeah. Warm containers. And you tell it to be greedy, to load everything or load them lazily as you need them. So we've done a lot of work. The, the primary purpose is how fast can you get your code in production? And we are looking to help you do that as fast as you can. So, um, there you go. There's some, there's some other questions here, uh, but, and I'll kind of peruse them and then, uh, go, you go ahead and show the next one and we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Lots awesome, of good yeah. ones coming in. Great. Yeah, so this is just a visualization of what we just shown, so how it works under the hood, right? So um, this was the one that we had like before uh, on how it works, and this is the one with a container. So what it does, it just mounts your source folder where your code is in, um, has it then in this kind of container, and then some builds will be executed in there, and then um, the same things happen as before. The output will then be put again in this kind of output folder, zipped and then um, deployed. So uh, yeah, this is just how it works under the hood. Now the cool thing is now I just showed you the kind of default uh, images that Sam provides, but there are sometimes uh, occasions where you need something um, additionally installed to create your kind of application. And that can be Two things, for example, in the Java space that are very common. So first of all, if you want to build like a GraalVM native image, for example, right, you obviously also to build your application, you need GraalVM and the native image tool, for example. And this does not come out of the box, for example, from those build images that we provide. Or if you want to build a Lambda custom runtime with a Java version that we do not support, um, for example, or like maybe a non-LTS version, then you can um, also create your own build image with that Java version and um, create a custom runtime with exactly the dependencies that you need for that. And we have two examples prepared for that. Now, obviously, we cannot use um, the predefined build images anymore, so we need to define our own. And um, actually, it's pretty easy um, to do that. So I have here this uh, GraalVM custom uh, project, which is also in the GitHub repository. And now I provide my own Docker file on how I want to build my application. So I have here a Docker file where I base actually my work on the already defined SAM build image, like the uh, Java 11 one latest. So it already comes with Java 11. It comes with Maven, but I'm now missing GraalVM and the native image tool. So I will just install that in addition, right? So I create a new image and I add those new layers. I add the GraalVM dependencies. I add the native image tools and I set, I need to do that. I need to set the Java home to the GraalVM folder so that when I execute like um, this Maven build process that requires uh, GraalVM that it uses this kind of um, folder. So uh, what you can do now is you basically have this Docker file and now you can build it yourself, for example, locally. So I can do um, build Sam, and then you do custom Graal image, for example. And this will then um, create this kind of image locally. I already have it here, so it's cached, so it's quite fast. And now if I want to build, um, let I, I now do it without a container. So if I would hit Sam build without a container and I do not have a GraalVM installed locally, for example, it would try to package it and it will say build failed because I do not have um, uh, here, where does it say? The G, uh, um, a Graal tool wasn't found, right? I don't have it locally. But now I, uh, I have it here in my image. So what I can do, I can do some build, use container, and then I send, say, build image, and I define the one that I just built locally. And now what Sam will do is it will spin up a container based on my image, and we can actually look at it, how it looks like here. So if we do, like, uh, we see here the running container that is now taking care of building it. 
we can do uh, Docker logs and we can see what's happening inside the container. So you see now a lot of Maven dependencies are going to be downloaded because it doesn't use my local cache, obviously. And then it will execute the Graal VM kind of the Maven plugin to build the Graal VM native image inside that container that has this kind of dependencies. So it's very convenient forever. I want to build uh, that we do not provide out of the box images. You can customize it um, completely on um, uh, how you want. Okay, straight up, I'm going to tell you, I know Sam really well. I didn't know that. That was cool. That's really cool. To, to generate the image that you want to build from. Was that your idea, Mehmet? It probably was. Yeah, that's good stuff. No, this is coming yeah. from Max. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. All right, Max, you get the credit. Sorry. And and this is one where Mehmet would push back at me and go, hey, Eric, why don't you just read the instructions? That'd be great. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that's really cool, Max. Uh, uh, very cool. I hadn't seen that. Uh yeah, and we have a second example. So this is for Graal. I mean, the native image build process takes some time. I don't want to bore you two to three minutes to wait for that now. But uh, you can also, we have here a second example. As I just pushed that today on how you can also build um, a, a Java version. So currently, <clears throat> we do not uh, support Java 17 yet on Lambda, right? Um, but if you want to leverage it, we can have here this kind of base image. We can pull Java 17, uh, the, the, the Coretto one, right? We can install a, a, a newer Maven version, for example, and then we can create our own minimized Java 17 runtime and pull that then into a custom runtime. So again, I'm basing my work on the SAM provided base image. I install everything that I need um, on top of that, and then I build my app with those Java 17 dependencies. I can bundle that and uh, I, I have a custom runtime with Java 17 in there, for example. So this is the power of the custom runtime is is phenomenal. So so basically, and and we have a lot. In fact, I think we have uh, Python 10 uh, in Sam right now to play around with. It's not ready for production, but using the same setup, you can do. You can you can look at. It may, we we may not support the version yet, but. But with custom runtimes, you can. And we have folks that I, 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 we have folks that have built it for Elixir, for for you know, obviously Rust is out there for Bash. I mean, there's lots of people using custom runtimes for a lot of different things. Super, uh, super powerful. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna can I do a couple of questions while we're waiting on for that to build? Sure. All right. So uh, let's see. All right. So here here's one. Uh, this is uh, Sunny asks. Does AWS serverless team recommend uh, leveraging container images uh, for packing Lambda functions or zip format? Um, there are a couple of advantages, uh, pros and cons for both uh, yep. approaches. Um, I think we also have like a small blog that we wrote about it at some point. But yeah, there are different kind of um, things that you need to watch out for. Right, a container image, for example, might make sense if you have like you have like a size restriction on how big your zip package can go. If you if you, you leverage container images, for example, you can go up to ten gigabyte, right? So if you're limited by size in any means, right, then it might be a viable option. Um, and yeah, you have to basically do your analysis on what fits more to your specific uh, workload. But yeah, there are different things you need to consider then, like the image caching, for example. So there are, uh, I think we can post a link to where we did like a, uh, not a comparison, but like to list all the pros and cons of the different package types. And then you can make the decision for your for your workload. Not sure, Mehmet, what's your experience on that? Yeah, I also don't... I, I think uh, there is no like clear uh, winner like you should use one or the other. Uh, that really depends on you know the use case. Uh, but for instance, there is also a question about Java 17. So Java 17 OCI image is out right now. So if you want to use Java 17 uh, on on a Lambda function, you can use image type lambdas by basing of your Docker from that image. That's also possible with Python 3.10. The zip files are not supported yet, uh, but you know if you want to work on the runtimes that's not been supported yet, image type is one way to go. Yeah, I, I my philosophy or how I tend to approach it is I start with zip until I need container. 
just simply yeah. because that's what I know, you know? So I start with zip and I've had it happen. I, I, the other day I was doing some stuff and I use pandas with Python and pandas is huge. And so I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I need to go to containers and it's not a hard switch. Right. Uh, and, and so, you, you know, I just change the same template and, and, and you can do that, but that tends to be how I approach it. Um, yeah. But again, that's what I know. It, it really is based on what your needs are. Yeah, there's an important uh, point as well. It's not like that you can put, uh, take any kind of container image that you have with uh, or with Java and you just throw it on Lambda. That's not how it works, right? So there are different base images right. that you need to require. You need like a runtime interface client to make it, uh, um, if you bring your completely own kind of custom image, you need to take care of a lot of other things. So it's not like you take your, um, kind of Kubernetes container image that you're running, and then you just throw it on Lambda. There's still it's very it's it, there's a few things that you need to consider, and that is a fantastic segue into uh, Klaus did a follow up. He he had he's the one that did the question about uh, the FAS and stuff like that. He had a follow up, and and in and I'm going to kind of give his statement. It says it seems to me that in our examples there's a a lack of comparison how the architecture of Monolith will change into microservices. And you're right, Klaus. We didn't we didn't. Or I think it's Klaus. I, I'm so sorry if I'm slaughtering your name, but um, we didn't go into exactly all it would take. But you're right. Just a standard uh, a standard you know, monolith, you're not just going to pick it up and drop it into a Lambda function. You can using like the, you know, the, the, we have the, you know, URL or the, the function URL, but there's, there's, it's a different way in thinking. Again, it's an event driven way of thinking. And that's, and, and the, the uh, client that Max is talking about takes this kind of functional call and turns it into an event for Lambda to work off of. Right. And so it definitely is a change in the way you think. And no, I, we didn't spend a lot of time on it just simply because mm -hmm. it's a lot of scope for this this yeah. uh, particular one. But, yeah, definitely encourage looking at that. Um, and then I'm going to go back real quick. We, we had a question that I, I didn't ignore, but I kind of put to the end. We had a question. Uh, what uh, what do we suggest or, or what's our thought in? And I get this question a lot in between AWS SAM and serverless framework. Here's my response. Uh, they're both great. Uh, Service Framework is a partner of ours. We love it. They've been doing it forever. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Uh, I, I choose Sam, even before I worked for AWS, so this isn't the AWS answer. This is Eric Johnson answer. I chose Sam because I like the opinionated way of, uh, it, it is always driven. We built some tools to do some local sanity checks, but it's always driven to kind of get to the cloud as soon as possible. And I believe that's the best way of going about it. But, you know, Service Framework has a, has a phenomenal plugin, uh, you know, ecosystem that allows you to do a lot of stuff local and it works, you know, it works and stuff. But I just know that I have run into issues where, all right, I'm just going to openly say it. I'm lousy with Docker Network, right? I'm not good at it. And so I didn't want to sit there and wonder, what is it working? I don't know. So, um, but they, they both do very much the same thing. At the end of the day, they're outputting to, uh, or they're outputting to cloud formation. And so, um, Use what use which one works best for you. Both lead to serverless. They're great. Uh, and, and I know I probably ran around that answer. I didn't give you a, hey, this is better than this. There's much like zip versus containers. There's pluses and minus to each. So check them out. So I would say we, we love Sam. Obviously, it's an AWS uh, product. But again, I, I mean, I for goodness sakes, I have not one but two Sam costumes in my closet, which my wife is not happy about it. So you know that I love it. But uh, hopefully that helps. Um, um, and then we have one more question coming in here. And do, do you have another one you're you're going to show? And I'll bring this question back around. So. Uh, Max, I think you're on mute. Yep. Yeah, you're muted. Yes. Thanks a lot. All right. So uh, the build finished. In the meantime, so what it, it did now, as you can see in the same build folder, you now have this kind of custom runtime. So it contains the native binary that the Gal VF native image tool will generate and the bootstrap file. And that's like the very essential thing that you need for a Lambda custom runtime. So you need like a bootstrap file that tells how to start the app, which in that case, it's just please run this native kind of binary with um, the entry point, and that's the native binary. And now, again, if I would do SAM deploy, this will get packaged as a zip uploaded, 
and this is my custom uh, runtime. And the thing that I showed you with the custom JRE, for example, with the Java 17 approach, um, this has also a bootstrap file on how to start the application, but it contains now the jar as well, because we're not doing native image, but like yeah, just a traditional Java application. And it, it will contain the Java kind of uh, JRE to actually run the program. So Java 17, essentially, to run it. There is like a few things that you can leverage, I think, since Java 9 or something, like JLink, right? So you can build really an optimized and minimized kind of Java runtime that just has the necessary dependencies for you. Um, we have a whole blog also on this that we can share. Um, but yeah, this is basically the two ways where like a custom builder image for Sam would make sense. So GalVM, for example, or um, Java custom runtime. And the last example that we have is actually the most simple one. Now, we showed a lot of ways on how you can build with SAM, like in container, default, UberJar, and so on. But sometimes you might already have very sophisticated uh, kind of internal build mechanisms. So you have very advanced kind of tooling, and you don't want to use SAM build at all, right? So you have everything sorted out in your kind of scripts. So what you can do now, and I think, remember, this is kind of new, this kind of functionality. Yes. Um, what we have here in the template um, is um, a skip build, essentially. And yeah, Mehmet, do you want to go on this? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think skip build is out there for a year or so. And oh, wow. as you mentioned, uh, yeah, I think it came with the uh, I guess CDK or Terraform integration. But um, as you mentioned, if you're already pointing to your build jar file, you actually don't need to run SAM build at all. Like you can just continue the next command, like which is package deploy uh, or even SAM sync. And then, you know, you can skip the build part. But if you have some functions that needs to be built and some functions that's already been built, then you can just add this metadata skip build through for the functions that you already built so that you can still continue using SAM build, but SAM build will just, you know, skip this and update your paths to the correct jar location. So whenever you do package and deploy, your template will still contain the correct jar locations and also build the rest of the functions that needs to be built. Yeah, exactly. So here we just reference the already pre-built jar. So we're not building it with SAM build and we say, therefore, you also can just ignore it in case we hit SAM build because you might have another function here that you want to leverage the SAM build process, but not for this one. So you can kind of exclude. All right. All right. So I have one more question, and then I'm going to throw at you. Uh, interesting, interesting here. He's like, great. Besides flexibility, dependency, versioning, and programming languages, is there any other difference between using AWS runtime and custom runtime? For example, for exactly the same conditions, no JS18 from AWS and no JS18 official Docker image. Now I'm going to give you the caveat moment that you have roughly two minutes to answer this. Go. Can I, can I use it depends here as well? Yes, you can use it depends. Yeah. And and the one thing I'll throw out before we've all put our Twitter handles up here. So please reach out to us on Twitter if you need to. Uh Mima, I'll let you yeah. go. So for this one, I mean I'm I'm not really uh you know, I don't really know the internals of Lambda runtimes. Maybe Eric, you can invite someone in the next instances. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. But, what my, my two cents will be the zip runtime might have some you know improvements because it knows which language and version that you are running but the image type is really generic so there might be some improvements for the zip runtimes there all righty and then before we run out of time we had one last question i wasn't ignoring it just came earlier uh it says hi guys i'm preparing for the aws dev associates exam do you have any resources i can use to practice service sections like starter files for java apps with sam so I would encourage the, the on, uh, we have skill builders. If you look up AWS skill builders, there is a serverless section on that. That would be very helpful for developers. You should not, I haven't taken it in a while, so please do not come back to me and go, you lied. Last time I took it, uh, you should not have to deal specifically with the Java aspect as much as you do uh, you know, the, the serverless and, 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 and dealing with, you know, queues and topics and things like that. So, um, but uh, yeah, I would definitely look up AWS skill builders. They're free. Uh, there's some classes in there free and, and definitely check that out. In fact, there's a serverless certificate you can get, and that's a great place to start uh, for this. And with that, we are out of time. Max, Mima, I really appreciate it. This is a great show. There's a lot of good information, some great questions coming in. I appreciate that. Uh, and so 
Uh, any shameless plugs you want to throw out there before before I wrap us up? <clears throat> Maybe because this migration topic came up um, a lot with like bringing monoliths and how do I make it compatible. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you already posted the Java on AWS Lambda workshop, which covers exactly that. Yep. And yeah, so if you really want to see how can I bring my Spring Boot application, how can I optimize it? And there are also some performance benchmarks so that you get an idea how fast Java can be. Also on serverless, take a look at, uh, at that. Uh, it might give you some good starters. And yeah, uh, you might also reach out to me on, on Twitter, for example, if you, if right. you need and, anything and else. In case you missed it and don't want to scroll up, I'm reposting it right now. Um, Amendment, you have anything you need to throw out? Uh, no, we are open in GitHub. If you have any issues, questions, or feature requests, don't hesitate to you know create issues for us. We will try to you know follow up there. That's right. With that, we are out of time. I really appreciate y'all coming. It was a lot of fun. Now, what happens is I'm going to hit in broadcasting. Usually, our ho our guests sing us out. So, uh, Mehmet, I'm going to let you sing if you want. So. With that, we'll have a good one. We'll see you later.